Churches are rising up and revolting against their far-left governor's ban on Christian worship. In this video, we're going to take a look at the latest example of a mass populist uprising against our secular globalist elite and how such an uprising signals nothing less than a return to a far more conservative age. You're not going to want to miss this. Greetings, everyone, patriots across the globe. Dr. Steve here with you. Great to be with you as always. If this is your first time here on this channel, we post two videos a day analyzing current events and analyze some super awesome conservative trends so we can all live in the present in light of even better things to come. So you know what to do if you haven't already done so. Make sure to smack that bell and subscribe button. It'd be an absolute privilege to have you a regular part of this channel where each and every day we together celebrate the inevitable collapse of left-wing globalism and the unstoppable rise of a new conservative age. So let's start off our video uh, with our video chat question of the day. Do you support churches defying bans on Christian worship? Let us know in the comments section below. It should make for very interesting reading there. Do you support this Christian uprising that's deliberately defying the far left ban on holding church services, singing and the like? Let us know what you think because we're going to take a look at what's really going on, particularly in California, that I think is essential to restoring a new conservative world. So you're not going to want to miss that. But before we dive in here, if you're looking for an encouraging and hopeful alternative to all the fake news that's being spewed out there by the leftist likes of CNN and MSNBC and the New York Times, you're going to find no better antidote than what's in the pages of my book, The Return of Christendom. Do not take my word for it. Just read through the reviews on Amazon. There's over 150 of them. And you'll see how this book cuts through all the cynicism and despair that we so often feel living in this crazy globalist world. And what it's going to do is it's going to inspire you and give you the hope you need to look at the world in a whole new light. In page after page, I give you all the data and statistics and indicators that show nothing less than a new conservative Christian majority emerging throughout the United States and Europe, and it is already transforming the world map into a more nationalist, populist, and traditionalist world. And if you click on that link below, we're offering it for a limited time at a 50% discount. That's right, 50% off. So don't wait. It's a limited time offer. Click on that link and get your book at a super discount today and arm yourself with the information you need to crush fake news once and for all. All right, gang, so let's dive in here. We got some amazing news, some pretty astonishing developments in terms of a very real uprising that's going on quite literally everywhere against draconian COVID-19 restrictions. Now, just to set the stage here, I'm sure many of you are familiar with the latest absurd Supreme Court ruling that decided that casinos could stay open and do business while churches had to remain closed. Do you remember this? It was the turncoat John Roberts who decided in five to four ruling that had the audacity to say that the state of Nevada was well within its rights to impose tighter restrictions on churches than on casinos. Casinos could be open for business, no problem, but praying in church on Sunday, nope, nope, that's not allowed in the world of the left-wing lunatic lockdown. You can do slot machines, but you can't do sacraments. And obviously, this angered more Christians than anyone could have imagined. And so as a result, we really are seeing a massive revolt, an uprising among conservative Christians all across the country. Now, in many respects, this uprising is being led by the mega church pastor John MacArthur of Grace Community Church in Sun Valley, Los Angeles. And I'm sure many of you are familiar with him. Uh, if you're not familiar with the MacArthur, he, um, he pastors a massive church made up of several thousand congregants. And I believe he's written like 400 books. I mean, he's an absolute powerhouse of a pastor. Well, MacArthur's defying California regulations that have gone so far as to ban singing in church services as well as indoor worship. MacArthur and his massive thousand plus congregation have said in no uncertain terms, uh, you know what you can do with that order. You know what you can do with that ban. And so as a result, 
the city of Los Angeles, the leftist liberals in LA, the very same radicals, keep in mind, that sat back and watched with approval their city's businesses getting robbed and looted all in the name of social justice. The city with Mayor Eric Garcetti, who cut $150 million from the LA Police Department budget just to show his fidelity to the BLM call to defund the police. Yes, now these same leftist loons are threatening to imprison Pastor MacArthur. They've issued Grace Community Church a cease and desist letter for continuing indoor worship services that have been banned. They're threatening a daily $1,000 fine until the church complies. And of course, if needed, MacArthur's arrest as well, as well as taking the church to court. And so not to be outdone. You ready for this? This is so awesome. John MacArthur is getting special counsel from President Trump's personal attorney, Jenna Ellis. Now, again, gang, this is what makes Trump so awesome. He's a fighter. And as a fighter, he is absolutely willing to stand right next to us when the leftist loons start attacking. He walks the talk. In an interview with the Christian Post, Ellis said, quote, I stand firmly with Grace Community Church, its elder board, and Pastor MacArthur in biblical truth and the protections American churches have provided by our Constitution. I look forward to advocating on their behalf and hopefully encouraging other pastors and churches to also have the courage of Pastor MacArthur to stand firm that church is essential. In another statement, Trump's lawyer said, quote, the state has absolutely no power to impose the restrictions it's demanding. This is not about health and safety, it is about targeting churches. Amen and amen. Past MacArthur's defiant, he has no plans whatsoever to capitulate to these immoral demands. He said, and I am quoting him, quote, it has never been the prerogative of civil government to order, modify, forbid, or mandate worship. Freedom of worship is a command of God, not a privilege granted by the state. Now, MacArthur's church is not alone. A number of churches in Northern California in particular are defying the ban on worship. And churches in San Diego as well are defying the ban. Now, this backlash, this massive revolt has actually been going on for some time now. Back at the end of May, it was already apparent that literally thousands of churches were going to intentionally disobey and disregard what they considered, rightly in my view, draconian lockdown orders. President Trump, of course, signed the executive order designating churches essential social services that can remain open in the midst of the pandemic. But when the Supreme Court handed down that decision that declared that casinos, right, indoor casino activity was cool, while indoor activity in churches wasn't, I think that was a game changer for a lot of people who've been more or less sitting on the fence with this issue and just trying to comply. And don't get me wrong, it is complicated. And I think there could have been a very positive and highly cooperative way of working out how to worship together while addressing concerns for public health. But this absurd double standard that's being shoved down the throats of conservative Christians uh, where they can go to slot machines, but they've been banned from the sacraments. Um, I think in many respects, that was the last straw. And I think this goes way beyond the issue of just religious liberty and how the state has no constitutional right to restrict the gathering together for worship, which we as Christians see as a duty and requirement given to us by God. Think about it. I mean, think about it. In the midst of this deadly pandemic, don't you want churches full of prayers and petitions? <laughs> Don't you want a praying nation? Well, not if you're a left-wing liberal, no. But I think this goes beyond even the issues of religious liberty. What we have to understand is that in making this absurd decision, what the Supreme Court in effect did is it officially consigned the church as nothing more than a mere private organization, like a pizzeria or a dry cleaner's. According to the Supreme Court, at least five judges on the court, the church is literally nothing more. The church is a mere private organization, and as such, it has no public relevance whatsoever. Now, why is that important? Well, it's important because you got to get the social and political ramifications of that decision, because I don't think, I don't think the devastating effects of that decision 
have really hit us. Certainly hit John MacArthur and his tens of thousands of other, uh, his congregation, tens of thousands of other Christians in California. But what we have to understand is that there's a radical difference between public life and private life. Public and private fields of life operate according to very different social dynamics. What belongs to one does not necessarily belong to the other. And this is essential for us to understand. So follow me here. Public life consists of the objective. Private life consists of the subjective, the, the personal. Public life is obligatory, taxes and all, right? Private life is the optional. Make sense? Right. Public life in, involves rules that apply to everyone. Private life involves rules that apply to only some. And so what we have to understand is that for the last 1,500 years, the Christian church has been part of the public life of Western civilization. And as such, it's worked side by side with the state to cultivate civic virtue and foster a flourishing social and cultural life. So while church and state for the most part always remain distinct in that the state wasn't the church, the church wasn't the state, sword and sacrament, differential, that all. They nevertheless work together in an accommodationist relationship where they work together to cultivate civic virtue and foster a flourishing society. In fact, the church is the ideal society. It is the true politics. The church is the new Jerusalem that guides the civil magistrate in ruling in just and righteous ways. All right. That's been the role of the church in Western civilization for 1,500 years. So what we have to understand is that the Supreme Court decision that declared in effect casinos public institutions and churches mere private institutions with no public relevance at all, what we have to understand is that by relegating the church to the private sphere of life, the Supreme Court is robbing the church of its capacity to witness to truth. And that's because truth is public, it's not private. Truth is objective, not subjective. Truth is obligatory, it's not optional. Truth applies to all, not merely some. And that is the horrific ramifications of this insane Supreme Court ruling and the unconstitutional bans of these far-left lunatic governors and city councils. Make no mistake, this is an assault on the societal and cultural integrity of the Christian church which has been the primary sanctifying agent of Western civilization for nearly two millennia. So as conservatives, we need to give these churches our full support because when all is said and done, they are doing nothing less than reasserting the very kind of public we need for the advancement of a new conservative age and the end, the final end, of a left-wing liberal one. Now, before you go, make sure to like this video, comment down below, and subscribe to my channel. And you will definitely want to check out my latest video I just uploaded on the ratings disaster for the newly woke NBA and MLB, which is just another hilarious example of the age-old adage, get woke, go broke. You're not going to want to miss it, so make sure to click on the link, and I will see you over there. God bless.